we go. I still have 2,000 steps to do. I'm wearing my glasses because I like them. My hair's getting pretty okay. I cut it off on January 2nd because it was just a lot of, you know, I needed the fresh cut. My hair is just so dry now, so I'm going to give it a chance to refresh and grow better. Um, I'm going to go find my steps. Counter. So I can see where I'm at on my steps. Oof. Takes a while to pop back up, but I'm going to keep walking for about 20 minutes more today. I started the first 8,000 approximately steps. And then I got sidetracked. <laughs> I do that sometimes. Uh, let's see what my steps are at. 8,000. Wow. Feels nice. Oh, my hair starting. Give it a nice comb later if I go for a walk outside. <laughs> Oh. So hi to you guys. If you're just tuning into this video, my name is Jeanette Tatro. Uh, Tatro. <laughs> With a T. Oh. Whew. I was born with the last name Parody, Paradise without E. That's the name I was given. And that was a lot of confusion with what others were saying my name was as I was growing. <laughs> so, yeah, I had, in my teenage years, I tried to use my stepdad's name. As he was in the picture since I was very young. <laughs> My younger brother and sister were allowed to use his last name, but for some reason, legally speaking, I wasn't allowed to. <sighs> Still my dad, LeBlanc, so I went by the name LeBlanc for three years. <laughs> That's probably why I repeated the same Greg. <laughs> I didn't even know. That my last name was Paradise. Paradi. Anyways, I did know. I wanted to use my la my dad's last name. I never knew any Paradi in my family, except two brothers. But I mean, as a father figure, I was not. As a story of a story of a story kind of thing. Anyways. <laughs> <Whew>. <sighs> And then when I got married for about a year, at the age of 20, I must have been, the year was turning 21. So that was been 1981. <laughs> yeah. So I went with the name Power, and it was not a long-lived relationship. He's still alive. I'm still alive. I'm talking about long. And the department of the relationship. <sighs> yeah. So that's why I mean by short-lived relationship. Huh. We were young. Just a year part. <laughs> There's no animosity there. A lot of people would come up with their own conclusions of my feelings towards him because we weren't together. <laughs> like, wow, that's pretty amazing how people can tell me my story. <laughs> Just listen to them. Yeah. And uh, I worked. I worked. 
use her as a janitor back then or chambermaid or oof, little jobs like that five days a week for that one year period when I was together with my first husband there was a lot of miscommunication <laughs> we weren't together much so how do you get to know somebody when you know better you do better huh? we didn't really get to a connection part it was just by name only I think <laughs> he wanted me to move from Thunder Bay, Ontario to Alberta, Edmonton, Alberta. So just to appease him, since he's my husband, I moved there. I, was, I had this fear of crowds. It's like very intense fear of crowds. <laughs> Today, not so much. I realized that intense fear of crowds was me feeling other people's feelings and emotions and it's just got too crowded <laughs> so anyways it was just not my thing so in this building i had lived in uh my sec second and older were like three and one or even less than that it was 1981 by Uh, April of June of that year, we moved to Alberta. And I'm thinking, what am I going to do here? I don't know anybody. Right? That fear. Anyways. So we had moved into this building for a year and there was a lot of because when you know when you move into a new place there's a lot of adjustment there's a lot of changes there's a lot of things that you're not used to and you just <laughs> it wasn't a fun year for me not that being with my children was not fun. That was the most fun. <laughs> However, I wanted them safe near my parents. <laughs> not too far. You know, Edmonton, Alberta, to compare to Thunder Bay, Ontario, is two different locations, right? Whew. I didn't feel comfortable with that. I don't like being around people I don't know. Uh, yeah. and I could barely speak English. <laughs> so after a year, we finally moved back. And when we moved back, I told him, I don't want to be with you. It's not because I hate him. He himself was in Alberta. No? <sighs> but there was a lot of lack of communication and avoidance. A lot of, we weren't acting like a married couple. <laughs> Anyways. And all his friends that he hung around with, I felt uncomfortable with. Just everything was just off to me. I was 20, he was 21. Just a lot of things that happen when new relationships that you, when you're young, you don't expect. Uh, so when we came back to Thunder Bay, Ontario, I said, I don't want to be with you. You know, of course, people would say this story about him and then why I didn't want to be with him or that story. And nothing to do with that. <laughs> it just had to do a lot with feeling alone by myself and the only place I felt safe was in the apartment with the kids until I started seeing mice crawling out the cables no matter how much I kept it clean 
That really freaked me out. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. Oof, I think we were near a river. <laughs> and the mice would come out looking for a place. But still, then it would frighten me. I saw a mice there. And I would tell him when he'd come over to the house once in a blue moon. Hey, I saw some mice over there. So he sighs, he sees this mouse, and he jumps. So he was just as afraid of mice as I was. So he would just take off again. It's like, why am I with this guy? <laughs> so we were pretty young. But my worst fear is the them coming in the crib or in the bed where my children were. So I'd like constantly check the bedroom, making sure my kids were safe at night, you know, that kind of thing. And making sure they were coming near my kids or me. They would just come out whenever it got really quiet in the house at night when I try to watch a show. <laughs> You know, computer mice are way different than <laughs> actual mice. So, the app went into a deep sleep while I want to count my steps. 83. 83.93. I mean, I'm like, here I am talking. I was talking about extremes, all black and white, all or nothing concept thinking. That's from trauma, right? <laughs> Anyways. All hate and <laughs> everything like that. That's just from the stress Oof. but how what do we do about stress we don't avoid it we welcome it we think about it we process it what do we do about fear we don't avoid it we don't try to run away from it we welcome it same with pain what do we do with our pain do we try to run away from it pretend it's not happening Right? Again, it's about avoiding. We gotta embrace whatever we're feeling, whatever we're experiencing. We gotta embrace it. Because as we embrace it, as we welcome it, it's easier to work, get into the healing process. Healing process of that phobia, right? What was that about? That was a phobia, a fear. <laughs> cause a lot of anxiety. Why? It was just mice. <laughs> Still, I don't want no mice on my feet. <laughs> or around me. Or around my children. Uh, yeah. So, coping skills or poor coping skills with situations we have not experienced can turn into bad experiences. Ooh, it's natural. Look at that, I only have... Whew, 85, 84, 85. Is that thing moving at all? Yes. All right. So I got 1,500 to go. Eight steps. Yeah, now 1,500 steps. So what I was talking about, the black and white concepts or theories or beliefs. It's like she's a witch or he's a witch. Something from the Wizard of Oz. The Flying Monkeys. But really, we're all talking about the same thing. Codependency, hurt, phobias, shame, trauma, 
I know. And a lot of us are curious about where those things come from. And we want to know. But on the other side, we're like, no. We like that feeling excited. Is it excitement or is it scared feeling? Do we get the excitement and scared feeling? They're the same, same thing, right? So what happens? We watch scary movies. We watch spooky movies. We're drawn to the whole Halloween thing. Stephen King stuff. Why? Because at that point, we're probably feeling nothing. We're feeling nothing. We feel bored. So we invite and welcome drama in our lives to get some excitement. <laughs> but yet another person who's sensitive, you know, very sensitive person, may, ta may take that the wrong way. <laughs> They're like, wow, that person really doesn't like me at all, right? And some people are interested in documentaries because they want to know why people would even go there. <laughs> but at the same time, there's that disconnection of self. Ah, I wonder if I could be like that, <laughs> right? There's the one extreme to the other. You saw a show about somebody who's mean, or watch a documentary about somebody who just went into the crazy me. And then you're like, and then somebody calls you out on some behavior from when you were a child. Like you would bite people when you were scared or nervous. And then say, oh, you're just like that guy, except you're a woman. And it's like, that's a really, really bad label to give to somebody. It hurts. But instead of speaking up, you just like, don't say anything. You're just hurt on the inside. Your soul is like, am I condemned? <laughs> am I like that person? And you start associating with that horrible person because that's all you're watching, horrible things. <sighs> instead of associating with true self, that's a false self. That's where the fantasy, right? The disempowered, dis disempowerment comes from the false self, from false label. <sighs> so things that we may see as intriguing and awesome, it would be so neat to see that look of fear in her face. Nothing funny or neat about that, right? It's dysfunctional. <laughs> That's in the arena of dysfunction. So, so why I like to study about concepts is like, what's an unhealthy concept? From my perspective, from my point of view, from my understanding. And somebody else might say, I agree with you. Right? Somebody say, yeah, that's unhealthy. And that's all we do is preoccupy our mind with the negative behaviors of others. Are we saying, are we connecting with those people or... What's going on there? Why are we fishing for? Because there's a part, part of that powerless feeling. Well, at least if we're looking at that, I know I'm not that horrible or that powerless. Or, but we still, there's a reason why people get curious in the side of uh, bad behavior and narcissistic behavior and narcissistic abuse a lot of us we've seen stories based on truth we've seen on the news we've seen in an article where somebody was very abusive or we listened to a report of somebody who did this to his family or his wife and children and then you know that kind of thing we saw if we see this on shows like on a regular basis Right? <sighs> Traumatic experiences where the mother is dying of cancer and the child ends up all alone. Right? But it's just based on fantasy. Right? It's a movie. It's fantasy. Now, when it's a documentary, 
We're like, this is coming too close to the truth <laughs> for somebody's life. Why? Oh, yes, because they were so deep into that connecting with the trauma. It's good to connect with the trauma, but it's also good to heal from that trauma. To let it go. Take a nice deep breath and let it go. Right? Uh, punitive. You know, we don't belong in this group. Those are punitive lies, right? Our self-punishment lies that we entertain by watching these things that are not healthy for ourselves, for our thought process. And some people, that's, that's what they talk about. Because it's part of their oh, weekly, daily, of their work. <laughs> and at the same time, they're learning something from it. But when they go home, that's the last thing they want to talk about. It's like when you work in a call center and all you hear is people dumping their anger and their issues on you and you're like, I'm not Sally Jesse Raphael. I'm not uh, Jenny Jones. I'm not Ricky Lake. I'm not Don, uh, Phil Donu. <laughs> you know? I'm not Jerry Springer. You know, all those shows that... <laughs> Just, it's all about devalue, devaluing one another and shaming one another and the pave, you know, the intentions were certainly uh, good intentions from good, loving, caring people. Well, when it turns into a circus of People fighting over Tonka trucks, so to speak, right? Little children or girls fighting over whatever. Their toys. What is that? Right? That's how it's like it's the whole pe grown up people behave like uh, out of control. Like little children that feel like out of control when they're losing something. They feel like they should have it too. And this is all falls in the category of maladaptive behavior. We'll fight over a friend, for example. <sighs> or fight over uh, being better at something than another. There's no need to fight because whatever that person's learning is going to let you know what's going on, what they're learning, what's the learning process, what's how their healing process is, is being real, by being authentic, <laughs> by being truthful based on their knowledge, right? Some people have wisdom, they share that wisdom. Some people have knowledge, they share that knowledge. And some people very quiet into themselves they might feel like you're sucking the room <laughs> sucking the air out of the room even if they're taking a walk outside because they're just feeling it's too much just you know there's a time to speak and then there's a time to breathe and just walk enjoy the walk it's okay pace yourself let them pace themselves if you're walking by yourself you can go whatever pace you want <laughs> and quietly speak under your breath <laughs> and if you're speaking into a microphone you can do that too right oh but to each their own everybody deals with trauma and healing in different ways so that's okay <laughs> You're not you and I'm not you. <laughs> You're not me and I'm not you. All right, so we're separate people. 
It doesn't mean we're separated from God. It doesn't mean we're disconnected with God. We have our own lifeline to our connection with ourselves. Right? And if people are fearful of God, they've been told stories about God that are not too nice. Right? That's a form of spiritual abuse. So they fear that. We've got to respect their space. Right? And some people, that's the only connection that makes them feel <laughs> real or alive. And that's a connection that that's their reality. So taking somebody's reality away from them, that's not cool, right? So we mind our words. You're careful of the words we use around certain people, certain groups. You know that saying, when you're in Rome, behave like in Rome. And when you're not in Rome, behave like in that. There's a, there's a truth to that. Like, we don't have to win over. You know, communications are not about competition. Communications are about listening and then responding. Or responding and then listening. It's okay. I'm okay. I'm breathing just fine. I'm healthy. Wow. Every day, a brand new day to me is like a brand new surprise. Like, wow, I'm breathing. Even as a child, I thought that way. <laughs> I was taught that it was called humbleness. Of course, you're going to wake up in the morning and breathe. Right? And then, ah, that's one, one extreme to the other. How about we just take time to breathe and not get into that zone of we're going to tell them because we know better. Do we really? Right? It's okay to ask questions, even ourselves. Am I in the right state right now? Am I in the right state of mind? Right? Oof. I like stretching my arms and my legs, getting that feel of feel good feeling. Fill in the blanks in a good department. It's not always the case, right? It's called having equilibrium. Equilibrium. Accept ourselves the way we are. And not pick so much on ourselves of the things that we don't like about ourselves. There's a lot of things that we can go into that we like about ourselves. And that's okay. It does not make us pompous. It does not make us hypocrites. It does not make us whatever name calling that came from somewhere. If the source wasn't God, and it was all about berating you and shaming you and traumatizing you, you know that wasn't the source wasn't God, right? So you lean a little bit, let go of your own understanding and how people are one way or the other. There's a balance. One time somebody did something, uh, I can't remember what year that was, 2019? No. 2020, when that story came out about a narcissistic uh, annihilator who did something to his wife, pregnant wife and two daughters, you know? And I'm watching this. My, it was so fresh, right, from when it happened in August to the time I went to a meeting and they put this thing on through a tech talk. Somebody was talking about it. And I'm thinking, that, I wasn't talking about the lady, I was talking about that situation, what that man did. It just brought up a lot of, how could he? Now, I wasn't being pompous, I wasn't being self-righteous. I was like, how can somebody just think this is okay behavior? She cleaned his house, cooked his meals, took care of his children, did everything possible. But where's that little thing? What happened? 
that made him think this is okay behavior. I'm sure his dad didn't show that behavior to him, but somewhere along the way, he said it was okay. It's like he was given permission or giving himself permission to do what he did. I won't say his name because a lot of you guys who watched your story knows who I'm talking about. Who watched the story, who heard about the story. <sighs> I can e include the tech talk show about the story in my description for those of you who are curious about it. Uh, it's just so... <sighs> about discernment you know and if that guy knew how much he was loved and had self-assistance this is how I think if he would have just known how much love that he's responsible for the love he has in his life that's not his parents responsibility or other people that there's a time people need to just grow up right it's okay to grow up I know your parents and your grandparents tell you when you're wee wee baby Oh, you're so cute. Just stay that way. But don't ever grow up. They just say that because <laughs> that's what we say to kids. That's a natural thing we say. You know? But it's okay to grow up and make grown-up decisions. Now, if you're still a child, you're still in the growing process. But learn. You don't have to be watching all these horrific shows <laughs> about horrific... Uh, you know, evil spirits, stuff like that. Is that all you connect to? You're not connecting to God. God is good, right? God is just. But if you're connecting to everything that's opposite of God, and you say God permitted it, no, no, no. We've, we've all been given free will, right? Oof. Free will to choose. Or choices huh? religious or not I believe or not but if you choose not to believe in the good in life you think your thoughts are gonna be good <laughs> you think your words are gonna be good you got to connect you got it's okay to disconnect from what is not good and not lovely and not pure not healthy it's okay to connect, disconnect from those things. It's okay for, uh, to disconnect from the savior complex. <laughs> it's okay to disconnect from, I can save everybody and because God is in me. It's okay. Just think about your own salvation. Connect with your own salvation. <sighs> you know? We don't have to believe exactly the way our parents believe. We don't have to believe exactly the way our brothers and sisters believe. We don't have to believe exactly the way the people that we love believe. We have our own spirit. We have our own thought, our own mind, our own mindsets. It's okay to be ourselves. You know? I'm not judging that person that did that back in August of 2018. All I could think was, how could he do that? How? And what made him think? What made him tick? What makes him thick tick? And what made him think it's okay to do this? And of course, most people avoid it. Avoid that kind of story. Why? Because we don't want to, for people to think it's okay to do. Like, you know, all the stories you hear about this family, this guy doing this to his family and that, or a woman, vice versa, whatever. Being very disrespectful. So much disrespect for themselves, they don't have respect for others, right? So demoralized for themselves, they have no moral, <laughs> no more to share with others. 
so devaluing themselves. They don't have any value to share with others. Well, those people need time to themselves. They don't need to be in a place of, let's follow the crowd. No. Right? Let's be in with the in-group. Really? What is an in-group? What are those people's behaviors? Are they experiencing with drugs? Do you think you should hang around those people? Is that who you want to be defined as? <laughs> right? Or if they smoke, is that who you want to define yourself as? Is that what you identify with? Right? When we watch those shows that are demoralizing, devalualizing, devaluing, disrespectful. What is that? What is that? That's evil, right? That's how I see it. There's no in between. I know there's such thing as gray rock when you're in a bad relationship or abusive relationship for the sake of survival for both parties. Not in, you know, for the partner in that relationship or for ourselves. We still want to have some, some middle ground. And gray rock, I think that's what gray rock is about. We don't want to see them being hurt. That's not the best kind of revenge. We hope and pray that they will heal in their own time, in their own space, right? If we know they were hurt, <laughs> you know, and this is why they're behaving this way, let's give them a little bit more time and space when they're behaving a certain way instead of judging them, you, 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 right? What happens when we do you, 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 you? you? Five fingers are coming back this way. You, 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 you. Five are coming back this way. So, so it's like that boomerang effect. We throw it, it comes back. Throw it. So how about we sow some good seeds in our conversation? Yeah. If we sound angry, we probably have a lot of stuff that we're, in our thought process that we need to connect and confront and write it down. Has really does it have to do with those people or that it has to do with my own experiences or recent experiences or childhood trauma experiences, right? What are bad experiences? Trauma, <laughs> right? What are, uh, when we're looking out the window to see who's coming, just to make sure everything's safe, cool and collected, that's trauma, right? We behave that way because we've experienced trauma. <laughs> we've experienced abuse. We've experienced being put in a bad place. It's not fun, right? So judging people and thinking they deserve it because they were in this kind of work industry or that kind of work industry, not okay. I mean, according to your morals and standards, is that okay, right? <sighs> is it a value? Is it based on value when we're saying horrible things about other people? If it's not valuable and we don't want to talk about it because it hurts us too much, somebody did something horrible, we change the channel. We change the channeling in our own thinking, thought process. We go to the Word of God in prayer. Some of us don't feel comfortable going with the Word of God, and some of us do. But there's no... One way to heal. Anyways, I just thought I'd mention that because some people think if I'm not religious, well, I'm not religious, but <laughs> some people believe that way. If I'm not religious, I don't, I'm not this religion or that religion. That's their belief system. That's on them. God can believe it or not. Use the uh, Something that went wrong in somebody's life and make their lives better because God is a changer, right? God changes things for people to their betterment, for their benefit. <sighs> from trauma to healing, whatever the situation is, from the darkness to the light, from the lies to the truth, right?
And he's also provided with us with discernment. What is that? Spiritual eyes. <laughs> Spiritual hearing. We don't use the word to condemn other people's practices. I don't think that's in the word, right? So we just got to be careful. <sighs> Are we condemning ourselves from past experiences? Then we need to work on that personal healing, right? We need to work on that personal healing. <sighs> just thought I'd mention that because sometimes... <laughs> Uh, man who believe they're whatever, or women who believe they're, they could have had really bad experiences that they need to heal from. It doesn't make them a so and so and a so and so, but that's their reality. So we got to respect that reality, right? And not judge and not criticize. <laughs> Uh, wow, I'm almost at 10,000. <laughs> I just like studying. I'm 60. My sister's 63. And most people that study, no matter what age they are, they're, co they're keeping their cognitive, yeah, their cognizance, their competence. They have understanding. They have knowledge. They have a good spirit about them. They have the willingness to learn. And whatever they learn, they're willing to teach. If they see, they can, the room calls for it, right? Oof. Ah. Some people have this tenacity, they want to learn. And break through those barriers that were not, didn't seem like they could break, break through in their younger years. And, you know, create healthier relationships with their siblings. It doesn't have to be sibling rivalry when you say siblings. It could be siblings just getting along with one another. <sighs> Great relationships and respecting one another's boundaries and values and growing process and maturity process and not judging. You know, metaphorically speaking, metaphorically speaking, throwing that rock. What is that rock that we throw onto others? It's stuff that we haven't to dealt with, right? Ourselves. It doesn't mean we got to be perfect, right? There's a, there's such a thing as toxic positivity where it's everything's good, all is good, only God. Don't uh, talk about anything outside of God, right? There's such a thing as toxic positivity. And if you talk outside of my way of believing, then you're not one of God's. Well, that's a bit, a little bit extreme, right? <laughs> so check it out. Test the spirit. Does it feel right to you <laughs> to hate on others, to lift ourselves up in the spirit? Does it feel right to you to condemn others because they don't believe exactly the way you believe and are not from the religion you were brought up with. Right? Test the spirit. <sighs> Some people are not trustworthy. You can't just go out there and say, that would be something like casting your pearls before swine. Right? Isn't that what we would do? When people are in toxic relationship or narcissistic abuse relationship, that person that represents the toxic is a person that would be called out as the narcissistic or casting our pearl in front of the narcissistic, the abuser, the one that promotes abuse behaviors. You know, pray for discernment that God brings you into 
even in your play in your games when you're playing your videos that God brings you into a place of you know God is not if you play games that's what you do maybe may you have discernment between what is a not attacking and offering friendship not on healthy behavior but healthy behavior <sighs> anyways i've reached my 10,000 steps god bless <sighs> heard a lot of people say i love you so i'll say it back i love you In a, in a spiritual way. God bless.